Hi, welcome back to part three of the timing pitfall series. Welcome to grinding on timing pitfalls in Microsoft Classic projects. I'm very happy now to present you an exciting year of results. My name is Christoph. I'm a one-time expert at Vector and I'm very happy for you to have this presentation the next 20 minutes with you. Before we start, let's have a common understanding what is grinding even about? You may are hearing this word the very first time in your life. Every morning you start your daily routine with a cup of coffee. Therefore, you have a coffee machine at home. Within this coffee machine there is a grinder and this one is responsible for grinding the beans to a nicely uh, fine grinded powder and that one helps you to finally extract with hot water your coffee. Second point is, there are also tools existing. In this example, you see an angel gr uh, angle grinder. This one is for shaping a stone in the way you like it, for your paving in your garden or maybe for your roof. And if you ever did this in life, you are already aware how much effort you need to spend to finally come to a result. Third part is gaming. You may play the online game before, you know how much effort you need to spend over and over to gain more levels and loot on it. So for online gamers, grinding is already a very known term. Last but not least, my father is an electrical engineer and he was in, back in the 90s installing software for customers. I was installing the software for customers and therefore I spend afternoon by afternoon exchanging the floppy disks and transferring megabyte per megabyte. Back in the 90s I already made up my own definition of grinding. I define it as hard repetitive work with only small progress achieved after each step. This was Christoph back in 1996 while installing software. Let's directly jump to the automotive market. Let's go to a methodology of the scheduler grinding. Again, it's very simplified. So as step one, you have your ECU. You are deploying your software on this ECU. Afterwards, you start with testing and debugging your software. You may identify any issues. And as third step, you resolve it by adapt the configuration in DaVinci Configurator 5, you deploy the software again and you start this process over and over and over again. Therefore, let's talk about two more timing pitfalls in this video about missing automation at first and afterwards the missing chance of optimization of your project. Let's directly start with the DaVinci toolchain, which is used for the code generation. And when you do this, uh, you may have the question in your mind, what is even the right module to generate? Whole full project generation maybe takes too long, for example, one hour or longer. Here I would like to point out, there is even a DaVinci command line available. And this is the example for the Vector Timing Bundle VX1000. In here, I'm just referencing the project name and calling DaVinci command line with the given arguments. And this will generate all the modules for my real hardware use case, similar to the project generation when you trigger it from the tool itself. It finishes with zero errors and afterwards all the generated data you find by standard in the gen data folder. As a hint, please also check the documentation in DaVinci. You have a help, a help button and every step needed to make use of the command line is described very nicely in there. So to tackle this issue on this case is use the DaVinci com command line, include this in your build environment. You may have a huge benefit out of it. Second step is once all C and header files are there in place, we compile them. And in this example, we also make use of the A2L tool chain. So let's assume your ECU needs to be calibrated sooner or later. So we have an M master A2L file, which is updated with the information out of 
the ELF file in here. And then you finally, you get your project specific A2L file with the variable names and the addresses. Again, same question, similar before. What is even the right source to compile? Should I make a rebuild? Should I do a partial build? Maybe the full build takes too long. So three hours is kind of a number which is quite high and of any concern. What you could do in here, the compiler can be invoked with DaVinci by make usage of the external generator steps. In here, I'm using the standard vector make support by just calling the j.bat file. And here I'll include it as ex external generation step after the code generation was done. Therefore, you're achieving exactly the same result as calling jbat directly from your explorer. Same for the A2L toolchain, we are simply calling the A2L updater and in this case the master A2L will be updated with the addresses and finally you will then receive your project specific A2L file which can be directly included in your calibration toolchain. So my advice at this point is combine the generation and the compilation and improve therefore your build environment. Two tips right away, right away of the beginning, use the DaVinci configurator command line for the project generation and make also use of the external generation steps in your project. Once we build the file, we tackle the question how to flash on the target. In this case, I'm using the VX1000 system, which is connected to my evaluation board directly. In my Canopy project, I can use the graphical user interface and via the download button after selecting the right flash kernel, I can deploy the software on my target. You can also automatize this step even further by using the calculating and scripting language CASTLE. This is similar to the couple code from Canoe. So to be honest, flashing was never a big deal in terms of time. So we can also use different tools for it. You could use Reflash in case you have a bootloader, you can use that one. My example, I talked about the VX1000 or you take your debugger, whatever you want. Now we're using the twins, Canopy and Canoe for simulating and stimulating your ECU. In this case, we lock and trace also the data. Question is, what is the right data to lock here? Within Canopy, I'm collecting the trace information. Remember revealing timing pitfalls when I was talking about level two tracing, task tracing or runnable tracing, which we defined as level three tracing. This is collected through Canopy and stored in the MDF4, MF4 format, which was standardized back in the 90s. And from Canoe, I can also collect the bus monitoring data and store it together with the software traces in the MF4 file. Afterwards, when I fully used the software tracing and the bus monitoring and the MF4 are available, I import this data in the TA tool suite and finally run my evaluation scripts and make my test reports out of it. Within the TA tool suite, we already have an import assistant where we can define our own workflow for the input data, which is then afterwards evaluated. And finally, our module, timing module is saved. We can automize it even more and can also integrate our DaVinci project, introduce this into the import assistant. This one is Robin, by the way, so say hi to Robin at this occasion. He was also doing a lot in the past on the importer. Finally, we have two informations now available. We have the informations traced on the bus and the software traces. So please, for reading that one, let's differentiate it because they have been detected 
occupied two different detectors and also collected through two different routes. Benefit is now I can exactly see which information happens when on the bus. In this example, we traced a single CAN bus system with a test signal value also including a jump in here. And I'm also displaying the CAN ID so I can check also which message with, with which ID has been sent. And this helps me now to correlate this data along with the interrupts happening on software. And in case I'm seeing any unexpected scenario on the bus, I can track down the original issue if it comes from the software from your ECU really, really fast, pointing out to the right core, the right task and the right runnable. So my tip number 13 is, if possible, combine the bus monitoring and tracing software. This will allow you to get the full picture of your system. After the test reports are being printed out and you may will not receive a positive result at the beginning, you start over at the DaVinci tool chain, you compile and link, you flash on the target, you start your simulating and stimulating use cases, you log and trace and you do it over and over and over again. Question now, can we chain this entire tool chain together? For this study, let's assume a compilation time of zero minutes. My colleagues already improved the tool chain a lot. In case you also would like to have a really, really low compilation time, about only a few minutes or seconds, please feel free to write a ticket to support at vector.com. For flash and debugging, as we also defined, we assume here for the calculations and the presented results, zero minutes. Now what we achieved finally by chaining everything together and run it in a loop was 36 imports per hour and each of these traces is 5 seconds long. This is a ridiculous high number on data we are producing and also a very high rate on data. Let's use it now for the optimization chapter. So before you start even with your project, make sure as rationally number 14, you chain your tools together. What can we optimize now of the system? I brought a very famous um, example for you. Within the COM module, there is already the COM optimization container available. Let's have a really simple definition what these numbers do. This is the amount of PDUs processed during one interrupt lock. This means clearly spoken, if it's set to one, the interrupts are being locked for processing each PDU once, they are released again, next interrupt lock is coming. If you set it to eight, you lock the interrupt, you process eight PDUs and then you release the interrupts again. Question is now, if we set this to eight, is it even an optimization of our system or not? So the results here was for the entire tool chain, it was only one click since I had to put my finger on the generate button and generate the software and afterwards the build and trace tool chain was also successfully executed. So no more user interaction required. I grabbed the coffee and after three minutes and 29 seconds, I was also able to get the final data and have an evaluation on it. Let's discuss the results now of the collected traces. The overall task execution time was here determined by 95 microseconds and an overall CPU load of 108%. We further split it up. Com main function Rx, 22 microseconds. Com main function Tx, 45 microseconds. What you can also see, we collected the enter and the exit of each exclusive area access. In this example, the exclusive area is implemented as interrupt lock. After setting the parameter to eight, you immediately see an overall improvement. The CPU load drops down to 1.21%. The com main function Rx and Tx are way faster and we see less interrupt locks at all. Overall, this means a 35% improvement of your system. Side note, 
this is the vector sandbox I'm using here for a real custom project with an application using the communication stack a lot, this effect is way more drastic. Here again, you see the comparison before and after, how the system has less interrupt locks. This brings me to my final tip, rationally number 15, use the COM optimization container in your project. It's there for you being used and play around with the number of ISR logs. By standard, we are using the value eight. Of course, please consider it if it fits in the context of your project. That was my last tip. So you may have now the question in your mind, what happens next? We at Vector, we're still active. The time to trace what kind of actions are needed from your side. We start around about 100 clicks, down to 50 clicks, 10 clicks. Finally, we achieved to do this in one click. The time to trace is further reduced to five minutes. Integration of timing bundle at some point of time, it started with 10 days down to one day, 10 hours, one hour. Our next target here would to integrate everything also with one click. Besides that, based on our experience, we are creating additional workshop material and trainings with a focus on timing. Feel free to approach to us that we can help in your project as well. Finally, we started with some plugin development to further assist and help you in the configuration of your project and also do some offline analysis without even work on the target. Therefore, the trilogy is completed now. I really want to thank you and your time watching these videos. It was really a lot of fun for me participating in this project. I also would like to, thanks, to say thank you to Hossam and Thomas. These are the hidden heroes also participating in our user days and vector timing days. So you may already know them or you will get to know them in the future. These are now 15 tips, number one till five, you will find in revealing timing pitfalls. Number six to 10 will be explained in cleaning timing pitfalls. And within this video, I explained tip number 11 till 15. This was the trilogy, revealing, cleaning, and grinding in timing pitfalls in Microsoft Classic Projects. What was the point about the introduction? A couple of years ago, our student Svenja joined our team and she started to record her traces in a handwritten form by sitting next to the ECU and note down the timestamps. Therefore, she collected a lot of pieces of papers and nowadays, since she invested a lot of effort to automatize it, she finally also does this with one click. Thank you very much at this point of time Svenja, for your effort and your passion you put into this tool chain to further enhance it and bring it to the level it is currently have. Thank you again for listening to this video and see you the next time.